The reason I've got it in the box is to control all other light sources. I don't necessarily do this in the studio, but for this application I do. I can control, there's no other light that's going to affect that subject but the spotlight that I've got on it. What I've started to do here already is simply map out a simple tonal expression of what's going on there. Now with tonal painting, it differs from other sources, other, other techniques of painting, but tonal painting, we're looking at the emphasis of tone first. Um, a stand oil mixed with a bit of turpentine for a medium, and I had some brushes all mixed up here. I've mixed up some paints to save some time. I'm not going to tell you the colours that I'm using so much until I start mixing more up. And I use predominantly round brushes uh, with a few filberts thrown in and always big brushes. I only have a couple of small, uh, which I haven't even found out, a couple of small threes in rounds. That's about the smallest I go. So here we go. So what I've basically done here, I've, I've organised a few colours and I've organised them in mid-tones. And the reason why I've organised them in mid-tones is so when I stick a highlight on them, it glows. Then I know that my mid-tone is right. If I, this is pitching the painting, this is to me the most important part about a tonal painting is to pitch it. And I can start having, I have something to relate to. Anything on the canvas is something to relate to. And basically the first thing I've done with the canvas now, what you're looking at, is I've kind of just softened it out, taken away some of the white, put in some of the shadows, and pretty much now it's just a matter of painting in some of the simple things that I see. And I'm reducing everything down to just a shape of height and a shape of width. And I'm just bowl through this really, really quickly. I've got some darks already mixed up here and some lights. I'm going to be looking across at all of these things and try and get as much in and as fast as I can. At this point of the painting, nothing is actually right or nothing is wrong. It is just, it's just a series of statements. In this part of the painting, this relentless measurement will pay off. If you measure relentlessly at the start of the painting, then everything will fit in place towards the end of the painting, which is great. Um, but all I'm really looking at here is shapes and tone. And nothing else. If a colour looks similar, I'll use it. So I'm using a similar colour there for the... Um... Also, too, there's another thing important that I forgot to mention. The important thing I forgot to mention is once these have become subject, once I'm looking at them, what they are is actually irrelevant. It, I know, so my mind knows that they're books and pots and, and little things like that, but that's, that's actually irrelevant to the painting. In the tonal painting, the subject is irrelevant. What's relevant is the, the patterns and the harmonies and the relationships of, of colour and tone against shapes. And it looks like we're having technical failure. <laughs> so as you see, I'm very quickly here, not only throwing in the wrong tone, that was the wrong colour, wrong tone, I'm very quickly here establishing a simple tonal relationship of what I'm seeing. Building the background a little bit more now. Another important thing too that I'd like to mention is that quite often when people are painting, and I see this with my students all the time, they get so obsessed with actually painting the positive, painting the actual thing, and not actually looking at all the shapes around the thing. And the shapes around the thing are as important as the shape of the thing itself. And what will happen if you actually start painting, if I start, for example, painting this little pot shape here, it tends to get bigger and bigger and bigger and it begins to grow. And it's very soon out of proportion. But if you're painting from this area as well, so I'm painting this and I'm painting this negative space around it, which is just as, in a shape with the tone just as important as any other shape and tone in the painting, I, will, I can kind of chop it in from that side, push it out from, that, from within and chop it back again. So, it's really important to actually paint from both sides. And I have a little saying that if you paint everything else, my class can finish this statement, paint everything else and everything gets painted. So I'm not actually painting any one particular thing, but I'm painting everything at once. Now I'm gonna mix up a really big pool of paint to block out the last white areas of the canvas just getting, getting rid of the rest of the white of the canvas. And I'm going in for mid-tone, there'll be certainly some areas that I can brighten that up. 
So pretty quickly, we're already starting to see that we have something that is beginning to represent the subject. But one thing I want to do early, and I do this very early in the, sub, in the painting, is I want to squeeze out some more white. I go through oodles of white. But I want to stick some highlights on. Now these highlights I'll paint out again and again and again. But if, if I get these highlights on and they're singing, I know pretty much that my mid-tones are, are looking right. And it gives me a bit of confidence that I know what I'm on about and my painting's in the right direction. So I'm actually using that to, to extend the full tonal value right up from my darkest to my lightest. So I've got that established pretty much as early as I can within the painting. So now it's time to actually start painting. I've got that work done. And the next step is to start finishing it off. A big area, big brush. I'm going for approximate colours here. That again is another part of finishing a still mark is, is actually adjusting all these tones and colours. Let's get that on. As you can see, I probably go probably realise, you know, go through brushes really quickly, I really wrap on them. Cutting back against my forms. Already the painting's actually starting to sing a little bit, which is pleasing to see. And uh, my, my ambition now is to hold on to that basic um, tonal kind of pattern, if you like, work with keeping the painting as soft as we can and as neutral as we can for as long as we can. That was the first, the first words that the Rebels wrote to me about painting. 